she was there. Why can't you come to Christ and start enjoying rather than enjoying? So, the mission of the church is to mobilize us for the work of ministry. In Manila, they said, when you mobilize people, it must be for them to take their whole gospel. The trouble is that a lot of people, they are mobilized, but they are mobilized in the way of the health gospel. When they tell people, come to Jesus, all your problems are gone. How can we still have them? Now, we, if we, if we, if we preach here, it's be very funny. You already know that his, he, you already know that his wife uh, was fired last week. Now, but you tell you come to Jesus, they are not. It's another problem. You are getting fired. Now, tell them the whole gospel. The whole gospel is when you come to Jesus, He is called Jesus because He saves us from sin. He removes your guilt, but He's also called Jesus Christ. Christ means. The anointed ones, the master, the Lord. And Sylvia, you'll be very happy if it's removing you. It's master. <laughs> you don't negotiate. When he tells you to jump, you can't ask him why. You can only ask how oh, why. This Christianity you know, we are talking about grace, grace, grace. Grace means I can be immoral and going to heaven, which heaven. When you come to Christ, he is not just a savior, he is Christ, Lord. And so it will make you do things that you don't want to do at all. He will remove you from places that you are enjoying because they are not running to him. Are there some young men here? Pastor, there are some young men in this mm. You have picked a girl, he is right. That one who to marry them, he says no. Marry the one who is a seven. Now, it's very important to understand clearly. You, when you are a Christian, you don't marry the one you want. You marry the one God wants. I reminded this on the last week. Last week I was speaking in a conference, with an international conference with people from about 15 countries. But the person introduced me is somebody who used to be a forecast star. And when he introduced me, he said, Mr. Nana is a writer, has written a book called Finding a Life Partner. And she talked about how I gave her a lift from one of the campuses to go to Nairobi. And the whole journey was I was being grilled. Why did, call, did I call the book Finding a Life Partner? So I asked the lady, what should I have called it? Choosing a Life Partner. <laughs> I said, you haven't read it in the Bible. Christians don't choose. They only find it. When he becomes master, he chooses for you. Hmm, you want to be right? Take it to yourself. Now it's very important to understand. It's very important to understand that when you become a Christian, that's what you're talking about. Don't go for a mission to lie to people. If they truly become Christians, there will be things God will make them do, which you will not enjoy doing. And you will do them because He is the Master. Are we together? He will take you through things so that are challenging. The only thing He has promised you, Lord. And we people are always to the rules of his age. And that means you will never suffer loneliness. That you can say with, because the Bible, the Bible will back you. You enjoy your life. But enjoy does not mean there will be no trouble. You will enjoy the trouble also. Because you will bring trouble. <laughs> you know, instead of telling us to come to Jesus, things will be easy. He says, if you become a Christian, <laughs> and I'm now and I'm now in Matthew. If you come to Jesus, in the world you have many, not a few. Do we preach that? Do we preach that? No. We want people to come to Christ. So come to Jesus, not in religion. Which one are you reading? The whole gospel means they must know a coin has two sides. Hands and Jews. Don't your servant, let your servant be on the heads. And forget their tears. So mission is carrying the whole gospel. The whole gospel. Allowing the whole gospel to be what we are teaching people. And when some people come to Christ, they don't know what's right. Because they came knowingly. They had the whole counsel of God. So when they make a commitment, they'll be with him through thick and thin. So they are never going to do nature 
it will be important we give the whole gospel. Maybe they, they did not like what food, because then there's a denomination called food. So they call this whole, whole gospel. So let me repeat. If you are involved in a nation, you must use the time for the church gathered to mobilize the whole church. Not that you give the people, but the whole church. Number two, and you must equip them so they take the whole gospel. Number three, it demands me to the whole world. That's what they say in Manila. And if you, are, you can Google up, you can Google up that conference so that you get you get that message. It has to be the whole world. I still remember as a young man, I was actually a university student. When we were bringing nations in Yandara, there's a team I, I was God helped me to start in 1974. So we are now 50 years old of preaching in Yandara. But I still remember as young people, I was in my early 20s, you know, uh, trying to get many people to join. And I spent the people with the car. Sorry. People in the cars. Because that lady will help us to carry the equipment. <laughs> and one of our sisters had a boyfriend with a car. So he said, just talk to him. He went. He said, when you go to preach in an open air, he said, he doesn't preach in soccer schools. <laughs> so he never got the car. <laughs> because for him, he is a preacher to organize people. When you are going to organize people, come and call me. For now, we went for the open air without him. They actually got married, but today they don't live together. When you have a person who feels called only to certain places, he can't be to the other places, it means he's the master. Jesus is a servant. Am I going to repeat? So you must teach people. If it is the whole gospel, it must go to the whole world. That means you will preach to people who sometimes are very uncomfortable, who are very uncomfortable about preaching. But you don't have, have the talent to not to preach. You preach to everybody. There's a time I, in 1988, I went to Britain and um, I was in shock. Because I'd always known the white men came to as missionaries to Africa. So I thought I'm going to where the gospel comes from. And I still remember we were about share or cover the whole world. So we were about 14 countries of the world together. And as usual, I started witnessing, like I always do. And I was talking to this guy who is Dutch about Christ. And he thought he looked totally lost. I thought he was being rude. In the morning, we again sat near each other for breakfast. He said, Ah, John, I don't understand what you are talking about. There's a Bible in my room. And as I opened, I found there's a guy called Jesus. I said, Wait a minute, what do you call Jesus? Yeah. Of course. Of course, I was uh, younger than I am, and I was, I was in my thirties, and I felt very offended. I said, "What are you? Are you a Christian?" He said, "I am a Christian." What kind of a Christian who doesn't know anything about the Bible? He has never read the Bible. In Holland, at that time in nineteen eighties, they were not allowed to teach Bible in church, in schools, public schools. So he has never read the Bible. He has never. I said, "And you still call yourself a Christian?" Yes, I was baptized. And also be buried in church. So, because they have graves near the, near the church. So I couldn't understand how you can call yourself a Christian and you have never read the Bible. So I said, just tell me, how, you attend church, no? <laughs> so, how are you a Christian? He said, I'm a Christian and I have for very good reasons. If you are a member of the church, they will baptize your baby free of church, they will to went to them to your church, they will bury you to your church. On your time, you will tell the government to take part of their tax to the church. Because donations to the church are tax deductible. So you can see it's a fair game. But then I ask you my question, how will the pastor ever get your money? He said it's simple. During the week, he comes out to house collecting it. <laughs> Now that's when I understood why he knows nothing about the Bible. And the church is very rich. Because you can see it motivates them to give, isn't it? But they don't have to go to church. I'm trying to tell you, 
from Britain, I learned that the Europeans are cavalry. They actually have patterns. They know nothing. So whenever an expatriate came to work with me, I knew it was my responsibility to tell my brother God's prophets. And so, and because I was already writing books, I found they would be very interested to see a book written by one of their colleagues. And I know they will hear something about the gospel if they read my book. So I remember one CEO, and I gave him a book, and out of courtesy, he accepted it. The next time I produced another one, I went there. He said, John, let me be honest. That kind of trash, I don't read. I said, if you don't read, at least your wife will read. No, 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 Jesus is not in that kind of thing. No, your son will read. Of course, you know, you, you, I want the book to go to his house. By that time, he started turning red and was rising up. Anyway, by the time I was leaving the office, the secretary asked me, John, why do you want to be fired? Was that the CEO? I said, the two days, I don't want to be fired. My children were in school. I need school fees. But I also do know that if I don't tell him about Jesus, I have an answer in heaven. I would rather be jobless on my way to heaven than jobful on my way to hell. <laughs> so you need to understand when the, when the commission, they are saying nation is mobilizing 100% of the people, then taking 100% of the Bible to 100% of the, of the people. It's in order for you to understand your boss is a candidate. Your neighbor is a candidate. Your mother-in-law is a candidate. All people might be rich with the gospel. Are we together? And that's really what we are doing. Now, to do that, and I, and I, I realize we, we have to still finish by, by seven. To do that, it will be very important to understand that it involves our assets. What assets do we have? Because it is in the way we use those assets that the word of God will be able to move as part of that mission. And that's what we are calling my two-part talk, Kingdom Economics. The better way of calling it, to call it, call it stewardship. Stewardship. Um, and if somebody has it, they can project it. I'm asking the question, and I think it will be very important to understand that question. <coughs> Are you a steward or not? Are you a steward or not? Because if you are a steward, then you are a Christian. I'm proposing to you that anybody who is not a Christian is not a steward. But you ask, what do I have? What do I have? What asset do I have? And I was reading somewhere, something written by Tom Nelson, and he said, all of us are very rich. Have you ever known that even without food, you still can last 40 days? Hey, have you tried? Don't try. But, but they are saying you can go for 40 days without food. After 40 days, you'll be dead. And the reason, then, if you are eating, you have eaten in the last 39 days, you are very rich. I'm not communicating. So you can't start saying an asset, what do I have? What can I be a, uh, a steward for? When you have been eating. Now, here the next statement. It says, you can last three days only without water. Can you see water is much more important than food? And yet some of you had water even a few, a few minutes ago. Of course, it's, uh, those who are doctors will tell us it's called dehydration. <laughs> it is faster than hunger. So I'm trying to get you to see what the kind of assets you are. Another one said, it takes three minutes without air. In other words, you can last a whole three to four minutes, maximum four minutes, if I don't give you the oxygen. Can you see that oxygen is more important than water? Can you see that water is more important than food? But you have not had the, the biggest asset you have. 
it is called hope. Only a few, you can only last a few seconds. Once you lose, hope. You know, when you hear people commit suicide, they don't commit suicide because they are lacking food. They don't commit suicide because they lack energy. It is hope. In other words, you are in a situation and it's difficult. That's not what you will make you commit suicide. It is you are in a difficult situation and you cannot see it ever changing. What are you lacking? Hope. So all of It's just 
start out of having willingly accepting that Christ has taken over. When you get saved, it is similar to sweating, sweating until you buy a brand new car. After you have a new car, you tell me to take a drive with you. And they are, no, 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 I don't drive your driving. I want to be the one to drive. You see, wait a minute, it's my car, my money. You go to the passenger seat and say, I'm not coming in. The only way I'll come in is if I become driver. The trouble of allowing me to be the driver, you may be angry at going to Nairobi, I'll take you to Kitara. And if you try to play around with me, we'll go to that. So, Jesus, the only way he can enter your life is for you moving to be the passenger. The car is yours. <laughs> but you don't drive. You sit, sit on the back passengers. But it's mine. Yes, yeah, it's mine. It's yours. You claim. But the only way I'll enter this car is to become a passenger. I become a driver. And it's very important to understand that a lot of us think with the a difference. Have you heard on the TV written command the command you're warning? Have you heard? Have you heard something about it? The one in the one in the book of Job. Job could not have made his command his money. After all, he was the most messed up man we know. But people are claiming to quote the Bible, saying, Command you are. We can't. If the Son of God could not command his money, how could anybody else do it? You know, at the Garden of Gethsemane, he realized as a human being, this was a little too much for him to take. He said, God, surely, is there no time? Father, remove. Is there no time? He said, Wait a minute. Not my will, but. He was quiet. He realized he's owned. He's owned by the Father. And he can only do what the Father says. So the reason why we are not very involved in relation is because we are still owners. We have never entered the, the, the passenger seat. We are still driving our own on our own. We are driving whatever we possess. In this conference, in this week, God wants you to surrender the driver's seat to him. So he starts driving you. And I, I promise you, when he drives you, he will take you sometimes to the regions you don't want to go. But when he's a driver, it will be him who determines how things will be driven. And I think it will be very important. So the best example I have of a good of a steward is a bank manager. You know this guy can sign a banker's check of a billion shillings and will not bounce. Hey, you feel far reason. Unfortunately, that same day, he has been told by the way to come with the milk. And he has no money. <laughs> so he so, said, did you come with milk? No, I have no money. What do the children take? So they tell me I have no money. The Sunday is coming at the end of the week. Because you see, although he possesses Billions, he only owns the 200,000 shares of his salary, which he has to last a whole month. And this particular month, he has not done a good budgeting process. So by the last week, he has run out of money. I'm not going to it. A bank manager is a steward of billions. Any bank manager who starts imagining he is the owner who write checks and will soon be. No, fire is not bad enough. You soon be in Kamehameha. I'm not going to leave you. That happens to people. When they mistake what they are to us of, they mistake it with what they are doing. And so this week, we need to start asking ourselves, in which area are we starting to be people? Now, let me read for you, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. The Bible says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. Can you see that word again, possessions? This guy in the New Testament church did not get confused about ownership and possession. They knew they were in possession of what God owned, but they shared everything they had. You see, the moment what happened was none of that own. He has to beg Humphrey for food. When he owned it, when it's owned by God, he will not find it difficult to give it, isn't it? 
The reason why we are able to give money for mentions is because mission is God's thing. This is my money. Sometimes you feel like, God, oh, if I was not a member of this church, what would you do? <laughs> Every time it's about grace, I hear I have to the Lord I give. And it's equal to 40%. All these other people are just sharing 60%. God, are you not lucky to have me in church? <laughs> because you have mistaken what you are in possession with to be what you own. When you actually no longer own, you immediately know it's not yours. And it's very easy to give information. Am I right? Yeah. And that's what is actually missing. The stewardship brings you. Let me read another one. I promise to read this one. First Corinthians chapter 4. I'd like you to read it clearly with me. Are you there? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? And I'm talking to you. What do you have you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did? Okay, you know, the first time I read it, I read it that in the Bible. It's asking me to go through all my asset list and identify one thing which is in my possession which I was not given by God. Can you find something like that? You know, some of you regard your brightness as a sign. You know, the ones I own a car because of the bright. I got a name, Twist A for four. I got first class, honor. You are cheating yourself. Let me ask you the question. During that for four exam, if you had started diarrhea, <laughs> would you have passed? Don't you see the reason you passed it? Because you did not. And you think you are very clever. The cleverness does not work. All you need is to start the area. You are in class out, back out, and for a whole week. And you have no aim. Am I right? Yeah. Our time it was worse. I did my KP in 1967. And it all, ex all the three exams were done one day. You went in the morning, but the evening you have finished the KP. If you diarrhea that day, <laughs> you prepared to meet. And a lot of us used to read for 2007. Now you need to understand, nobody God became a, a, a graduate because they are clever. They got a graduate because they did not die. And the reason they did not die is because the Lord protected them. How do you die here? Or you just eat something, it's a drink, your stomach, and you see, we call it a running stomach. Yes. Actually, it's the legs that run. But you <laughs> need to be better. Am I clear? So, when the pastor is asking you, you are a doctor, I agree. You are a professor, I agree. Are you not aware you are only that as a gift from, from God? What do you have? You are not given. Oh, you tell me what you have a good wife. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the way I, I put her in the box, I did that story for another day. Ah, <laughs> Amen. Maybe what you are not aware is that you have just been disappointed by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Who was so hard to sir. <coughs> only to discover you were cheating. So when you came along, he said, even if it's a mess, come. <laughs> the Lord prepared the circumstances <coughs> to ensure he could not say, to be where you found her. You know, for me, it's a more complicated story. I was chairman of the university CU in 1975. In our time, we never passed the university. There was only one university. <laughs> Rebecca was then in Makerere University. Mm -hmm. And she, I'm from Central, she's from Lisa. There is no way we are going to meet. Just when I was a lad, we are going to finish. Jomo Kenyatta issued a presidential decree that all Kenyans in Makerere must come back to Kenya. Because of a guy called Ivy. That's how Rebecca came to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I got a wife by presidential decree. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, though, where that never issued. 
ایزان بوده یه رو اینا میسونیم پتی و ایزان میخواستم برای این فرمیده در چه همون دفرون رو نرکو بینام که مجبا So you cannot do 
you are mine. Because you are you want. Because you know she is not yours. She was not allocated to you. Right from a parent. For a reason. So he called one day asking, I have treated this girl to you. What have you done with it? Uh, she may be good and never ask you questions. But the owner will. Are we together? So you need to understand it will change the way you relate in your family, the way you relate. So time is sorted out, the way you relate with others is sorted out. Thirdly, when you become a steward, your impressions are gone. Because you'll never sit there one time you want to That's why you'll be a bit of a ministry. Because whether you have or don't have, you always be aware God is in control. And so you will not suffer. And finally, once you are steward, you will be a hundred percent impatient. Because you look at every job as an opportunity. When you are made a manager, you say, wait a minute, there must be something God wants me to accomplish in this city. No one has promoted me. Once you are, once you are, you are, you are, you are, you are transferred, there must be something in that area of transfer. Because every place of work is a parish. And God expects you to do something. In that new parish for the glory of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, make us truly stewards who are going to live our lives so that they will impact our families, impact our neighbors, impact our workmates, so that the kingdom will be extended as we live to honor. In Jesus' name we pray.